Hey makers, this is Truvin and welcome to the fifth episode of our popular segment that is Talk with Devs. This is the segment where we are inviting the people across the industry and we are gaining some knowledge from them. Today's session is also one of the interesting session which is the most requested topic from my YouTube channel, which is XMLA endpoint in Power BI. So during this session, we will be talking about some real life use case and scenario for XMLA endpoint with Power BI. And to present this session today on my show, we have our industry expert, Mr. Abhinav Singh. So before I invite Abhinav on my show, let me just give a little bit introduction about Abhinav. So Abhinav has having 15 plus years of experience in this industry. He is working with different Microsoft data technologies like Power BI and MSBI of SSRS, SSAS and SSIS. He is also working with Power Platform. He is active speaker and blogger and you can uh, see his different community post. I will share the link uh, after uh, this session as well description part of my channel. So Without wasting much time, I would like to invite Mr. Abhinav Singh on my show. Hi, Abhinav. Hello, Dhruvi. Good morning. How are good, you? Very good morning. I'm absolutely good. How about you? I'm doing good. Doing well. All thank right. You. So uh, first of all, uh, I would like to welcome you on my show. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your most valuable time and for amazing content that you are sharing with us on my show today. So people will definitely enjoy throughout this entire session and get to know more about XMLA data endpoints. And this is something which is a totally uh, new thing for my audience as well. And they will explore one more uh, part of the Power BI. So uh, before we get started, uh, Abhinav, I have a few questions for you. Sure. So uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, like uh, when Abhinav is not working uh, as, a as a technical person, what he would like to do? So what are the favorite things that you always love to do? So uh, Ruben, I spend most of my time, uh, leisure time cooking. So that's another hobby. Uh, I have an Instagram handle to foodies I come that where I <laughs> That's great. You know, uh, keep posting my recipes and uh, uh, food photography that I do. I also like running and uh, doing yoga. So I'm a yoga practitioner too for past five years almost. Uh, I've run on around four Airtel Delhi half marathons and a couple of other half marathons. And uh, uh, I also enjoy, you know, creating content uh, on uh, LinkedIn and uh, exploring new stuff around in the BI space. So uh, I've been following uh, you know, this uh, many channels, etc. When they even from the times of blogs, uh, right from 2008, 9, 10, uh, the, the, those points. And I I received, I really enjoy the way these things have pro progressed over social media. There's a lot of content that is now available. Uh, so uh, channels like yours, uh, you know, uh, so much students have uh, content to learn today and uh, they can go and find out things easily. So really enjoying this uh, phase. Yeah, that's that's really a great thing. And one thing you uh, talk about like uh, cooking. So it is also something which is one of my favorite as well. Like uh, during weekend, I would always like to try some uh, different recipes and all because we Indians are mostly foodie and try to yeah. do some <laughs> different things. That's and that's uh, another good thing. Yep. Uh, and uh, guys, let you uh, let me share you one more interesting thing about Abhinav. So you can see his LinkedIn profile on my screen at this moment. So uh, during this session or even after the session, if you have any question or concern, you can co directly connect Abhinav on his LinkedIn profile. And I will share the link in my description box as well. So you can directly connect uh, Abhinav from there. Second thing Abhinav talked about is community activities. So uh, he is very active in Power BI community and uh, you can see his uh, profile over here and he is a solution supplier badge at this moment and uh, every day he is answering most of the uh, so many questions on the community so uh, uh, you can also uh, connect him through this uh, Power BI community and apart from that I would recommend everyone for Abhinav's uh, LinkedIn blogs which are advanced so uh, once you visit his profile you will find uh, his feature blogs over here so uh, uh, 
go through there and learn different advanced concepts for Power BI. And definitely in future as well, uh, me and Abhino will uh, plan some uh, another good uh, session series for you as well. So uh, if you have any comment, suggestion, feedback, feel free to add in the comment section so uh, we can read your comments and plan out the next thing together. Uh, so this is one thing. Second question, Abhino, I want to ask you about uh, today's session. So uh, what is the overall goal and what is the overall agenda that we are going to cover uh, in this overall session? Sure. Uh, so Dhrubin, today's session primarily is going to cover XML endpoints uh, with Power BI. Uh, it is a really powerful feature of Power BI. Uh, I mean, XML endpoint uh, has existed for you know uh, more than a decade. And uh, since it's a protocol from SSAS days, analysis services days, uh, I want to show the audience how it blends with the uh, Power BI to perfectly and how they can use what the BI community has used uh, with analysis services, uh, the power of uh, using code with XMLA endpoints, uh, the power to refresh the cubes, the power to you know take backup, restores, etc., which have been added over past couple of years in Power BI space. Uh, so we, uh, I want to take the audience through that journey and uh, really establish that uh, how you can see Power BI you know as a uh, analytical uh, platform. You can see that how everything that we has been done traditionally with analysis services can be done similarly with Power BI. It is nothing different, uh, so that you can adopt Power BI as an end-to-end -end solution. So, all right. These are the main things that we'll cover: um, different tools that connect via uh, uh, XML endpoint with Power BI. So, we'll I'll try to cover a couple of those tools too, uh, like a SQL Server Profiler and uh, SSMS. Apart from the uh, code API that we are going to showcase as the primary objective of the session. All right, uh, that's really great. So we are uh, going to learn so much uh, uh, different things that how traditional technology can be adopted uh, with the uh, newer version of Power BI. Uh, so you know, I have one more question for you uh, here that uh, we are talking about XML endpoint throughout this entire session. So which are the real life use cases and which are the scenarios where we can use this XML endpoint as a business perspective? If you can elaborate more on that part, that would be good. Yes, Ruben. So um, we see that uh, there are a lot of uh, you know uh, traditional uh, MSPI space uh, cubes that are existing. Correct. Uh, we have tabular or like tabular cubes, multi-dimensional cubes. So traditionally, these uh, uh, there have been client applications that have worked with them. Uh, have used ADMD libraries to execute code on that, uh, get back measures from there and showcase them onto the client application in WPF client applications or .NET uh, web applications too. So similar manner, this capability is extended to Power BI data sets too. Uh, once this XMLA endpoint is in place for Power BI, now we can use our client libraries and get back the same measures, same information, for instance, total sales uh, you want to showcase, not only on the Power BI report, but you may have a need to showcase total sales on your uh, front end application too. All right. OK, so uh, I think uh, yes, that's really a uh, great feature. Now people do not need to, you know, if they wanted to only use the Power BI data storage, they do not need to maintain the another storage uh, in order to just call the information to their custom uh, tool. Uh, they can simply call this uh, with the API with the XML endpoint and they can just leverage that information over there. So that's really cool. So I think uh, uh, my audience will get more idea uh, during this demo part. So let's get started. And without taking much time uh, over here, Abhinav, you know, I would request you to share your screen and uh, go ahead and start with your uh, session. And once again, thank you so much for your uh, time and to be a part of uh, this show. I'm uh, honored to have you on my show. So uh, you can start and uh, go ahead with the session. Thanks, Ruben. Thank you for the opportunity. Glad to yeah. share. So uh, I'll start here. So we'll move to uh, the uh, couple of slides that I had prepared. Okay. Uh, just showcase that uh, what we have at this point in XMLA endpoint availability. So uh, we have, uh, so we know that Power BI, we develop reports, right? We deploy them to the service. And uh, when we deploy those, we have a data set and a BBI separately. When we do the development, we have uh, uh, just uh, you know, working with PBX on the uh, in the 
especially when we work with Power BI desktop. So we need to understand that uh, the Power BI data set is, is an extremely powerful thing. And with the XMLA endpoint cap capability, uh, Power BI is able to communicate to other client tools. So it is a protocol for communication between Power BI workspace and clients. When I speak client applications, uh, these include DAX Studio, SSDT Visual Studio, SQL Server Profiler. Traditionally, people who have worked with SQL Server know that uh, this is used for profiling SQL Server activities as well as for uh, analysis services. Uh, Power BI Report Builder, right, uh, which we are using to create the paginated reports and connect live to Power BI datasets. So that is behind the scenes also using XML endpoint. Uh, Tabular Editor, uh, which is using the read write capability to you know, edit the Power BI data sets too. Uh, this is interesting, MDX Studio, a tool back in, you know, 2011, 20, uh, 10, 2009, 10, 11. Uh, uh, this was developed to work with uh, uh, MDX queries on uh, multidimensional cubes. So you'd be glad to know that this tool still works uh, with Power BI. So if you want to connect this tool with Power BI, uh, you can connect uh, using XMLA endpoint too. So that is the power of uh, XMLA uh, endpoint availability and the value that it adds to the Power BI space. Excel, we have seen right uh, people work with pivoting. Uh, when you send analyze in Excel, you get a dedicated, uh, you know, a private XMLA endpoint that works your Excel and lies data in Excel when you do. Uh, then SSMS, like SQL Server Management Studio, which we could connect with the read-only capability also, but now we have read-write. Uh, it empowers us to backup, restore, and refresh too. So we, we will see how we can utilize those things. And uh, then the main uh, thing of our part, which is client libraries, uh, that is uh, how we can use the client applications to connect to uh, Power BI uh, using .NET uh, ADMD libraries. So we have... Uh, we have .NET Core client libraries, uh, which were published in July 2020. There was the public preview that it came in, and this was the first .NET Core support that came in for uh, analysis services client libraries and was also extended to Power BI in the similar manner. Now, and in February, we got the general availability. So this is why I want to push for XML endpoint uh, usage via client libraries more so that the applications, client applications like Angular applications or any other given application can connect to Power BI, any third party, even third party visualization tools can also connect to Power BI using XML endpoint. So, uh, and uh, uh, after in the later part of the session, we'll cover uh, that thing in detail. Uh, so I'll come back to this slide later. Uh, so before that, uh, let's start with uh, what we what all we need. All right, what all we need for connecting to Power BI. So uh, now uh, what we want to see is how we set up XMLA endpoint. All right, and so we'll go to the Power BI service, uh, my workspace. I'm here in my workspace here, and uh, this is. Uh, we are familiar with this. Uh, most of us would be. Uh, we'll go to the settings admin portal. All right, settings admin portal. We need to be a Power BI tenant administrator to execute this. So when we come to the admin portal and premium per user, we see XMLA endpoint over here. So you need to set it to read write to utilize the read write capabilities. Read only also helps, but we want to see how read write also uh, read write capability uh, is the latest thing in there and how you could write back to the data sets. So we'll use read right here and we will click this apply. So it may take up to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on uh, where your, uh, you know, where your uh, admin uh, tenant is. So in which region, etc. Uh, but it may also reflect instantly. So just wait for some time once you enable this. And so uh, we'll go back to my Power BI workspace. All right. So if I go to settings, you, this workspace needs to be in premium capacity since this is available only for premium. So what I'm using is I'm using premium per user here and uh, my workspace has been set to premium. So you see this premium icon here, so premium per user. Now this is my identity in the uh, clouds, right? So this is the workspace connection that I need to copy over to be able to connect to this by XML endpoint. So we copy over this. And uh, if you look at that, uh, that is uh, actually, uh, that is a general connection string. That is, if you put in your workspace name after my or Power BI API Power BI .com, so you'll be able to get this. So if you're not able to find it, uh, simply copy over this. And if you remember your workspace name, just add that over there. So we'll connect this uh, with the uh, AD authentication, right? 
and this step can only be done after you enable the XML endpoint. So first step is to enable it in admin portal and then uh, have it. Now this thing has existed since 2019, all right? And uh, still many people are not familiar who are not working with this uh, in this manner. Uh, with Power BI have not worked with analysis services. So I want all of them, them to understand that how uh, Power BI data sets are no different uh, in the manner that we used to work with analysis services. Uh, this one IT spend analysis sample is the IT spend analysis sample dashboard uh, from Microsoft that I published to my workspace. And you can see that you could see the structure here, right? You can see the tables, you can see the roles. So all the tables are visible here, uh, which are in there, similar to how you get uh, in DAX Studio. So you can also work from SSMS. Uh, this is we are connected to that, and here are our uh, tables. You could also browse, right? You could also browse and uh, put up your MDX, run your MDX or uh, DAX queries against it directly from here. So it, you see, no need to go to Power BI space, uh, no need to open that in. Uh, uh, Power BI desktop, you could still work it. And this is because of the capability of XML endpoint that has been provided here. So this is one factor of it. Now, uh, another thing that I want you to see here is these things that you uh, have all these capabilities with analysis services. You could process, you could backup, you could restore. So you see the power here. Now, if I press this backup, right? So as of now, this reads up, I'll, I'll show you. I, it gave me an error because it needs an ADLS storage. So if you have this ADLS storage here, you could use the XML endpoint capability to backup and restore your databases. Now, the uh, why is it required? Because uh, in traditionally, you see we keep our uh, point to point backups correct uh, in our uh, any of our databases, analysis services databases, or SQL Server databases, uh, we you tend to have the backup and restore strategies in place. So similarly, same things can be also be done now for Power BI data sets. So this is one advantage that XLA endpoint provides, and you could harness that using SSMS too. Now, if I script this, all right, script this database. Remove this ID, okay, for representational purpose. So uh, you see, uh, this is the script that is generated, all right, and uh, uh, we you see that there is an XMLA query which has been created. Now you'll be able to execute and create another cube in the Power BI using this script. So you see the power here that. Uh, now this one you see here, this was created without deploying anything to Power BI. This was like uh, creating it from SSMS connected to Power BI. So actual deployment is happening right here. I'll execute this. We'll try to execute this. It sometimes errors out. Uh, but let's see what happens here. And uh, you see, uh, so we got a success. And uh, in some time, this, this database should reflect here. You know how replication happens. It is already here. All right. We see this IT spend analysis sample copy XML. So it is a copy of the data set that we created. All right. I, I tend to call that database only. Um, but uh, you see uh, from Power BI terminology. So we have this created here. And you see that we did not use any BBIX file to deploy this over. Correct. We have used the Power BI data set as a separate entity altogether. So now you may be able to visualize that uh, how this is different, uh, how you know these two components are able to uh, connect uh, with Power BI, create a separate data set here, there itself, uh, create a copy, execute XML script, and uh, without getting into Power BI desktop. So See Power BI is entirely behaving here as we have worked traditionally with SSAs. So especially for people who have started with Power BI directly and uh, have not worked in MSPI space uh, earlier, uh, have not worked with Tableau Cubes, Tableau Modeling, they they need to understand that how beautifully it works uh, from from SSMS too, and uh, you would be able to uh, you know garner this uh, concept that we have to work with Power BI, we can work with Power BI, uh, utilize XML endpoint capabilities and uh, have it 
exactly work in the same manner that you have worked traditionally with uh, SSAS. Uh, we'll come back here later. So it takes a little some time to reflect here. Um, can we reconnect or possibly? Yes, it is here now. You see, a copy has been created, and uh, we are able to see that on the Power BI service as well as uh, on SSMS. So now this is one part of XML endpoint. Uh, I also want to show the capabilities that you have. You all may know that in premium per user or uh, pro capacities, right? We have limitations on data set refreshes, but uh, on demands one do not. Now you see uh, the power it provides is you can process this table, correct? This is like uh, refreshing the particular table altogether without uh, having to refresh the whole data set. So, Connecting via XML endpoint to your Power BI dataset empowers you to refresh just a section of the data. That is a single table altogether. So you can process this table only, and only the data of this will be uh, uh, refreshed on your Power BI service. This could be processed altogether, right? You could also script it uh, and keep it. So this is script in general, correct? So when we, I'm showing you this because when we come back to talk about client libraries, uh, we can showcase that these all scripts can be very well executed from code office. So you could end up virtually building your own application that can be used to refresh Power BI, your own custom application. And that is the idea here. That is building a custom API for yourself to interact with Power BI data sets. So you see if this refresh query is executed, it will go to IT spend analysis sample and refresh the table department from the source. That's the power that it provides. Similarly, uh, I'll pull up another tool that I, we saw in our slide. This SQL Server Profiler old tool, right? Uh, and this also connects with Power BI. On this, we have just to go to Options and select the database tool. For, uh, I'm selecting one of my databases. I'm connecting it will pull up my databases. So profiler uh, people have used to see right queries behind the scenes um, when we run SQL Server to see what's happening, how much time each query is taking, even with analysis services, uh, also to study the error log and everything. So uh, the same thing, same facility right here. You could go to event selection, select your uh, query events query begin, query end, anything else that you want to see there and start the trace only. So what will happen is uh, similar to DAX Studio, you'll be able to see the trace in SQL Server Profiler when uh, you are working with uh, Power BI, All right? So this will be able to showcase uh, how you, how much your uh, queries are executing, the actual queries those are executing, and you can also Put those out and study them yourselves. Uh, I know these. Uh, this is all provided now with DAX Studio, uh, but just to see, uh, showcase this to people that SQL Server Profiler. If you're trying to use, uh, who people who are comfortable with it can also connect to Power BI using XML endpoint capability and still use this, uh, just the way that they have been using it as a So when we run any query, that will appear in the profiler. So we'll come back to it later as we uh, run our uh, stuff in the Power BI space, and we'll be able to see how the queries have been executing here. I have uh, this is a screenshot of MDX Studio 2 that connected with it. So uh, you see this query was executed, um, <laughs> right? And uh, MDX Studio was able to connect to my endpoint IT spend analysis sample. So this is very old tool, uh, but just that it still works because of all because all thanks to XML endpoint capability. OK, uh, so now we'll uh, cover the main point of our session that is uh, for uh, working with the client libraries with Power BI data sets. So we have seen how X client applications work with XML endpoint capability with Power BI data sets. So in a similar manner, uh, we we'll see how code interacts with it, how we will be able to use .NET Core APIs uh, to uh, ADMD NuGet packages to connect to Power BI datasets and extract data from them. All right, so uh, all using XML endpoint capabilities. So we have Power BI datasets here. Uh, we are using XML endpoint that I'm trying to depict here. Uh, we are using ADMD NuGet packages, all right, uh, which are available uh, for download. 
and uh, we'll be using a .NET Core API uh, application because uh, we are trying to develop our own custom API. You could access this via just uh, you know uh, uh, building a Windows client application or anything else too. Uh, but the idea is to how to build your own custom API so that you could expose it to other client library, uh, other clients further. So uh, here I have created a core API. All right. So if you go to Visual Studio and uh, you uh, can start with creating a template, uh, you, if you have a, you can see a template uh, project of core API there. Select that and you'll uh, land up in the similar setting here. Now once you're here, uh, we will see that uh, you see uh, these package icon here. Okay. So you click Manage NuGet Packages. All right. So if you go to Manage NuGet Packages and search for ADMD. These are the libraries which uh, have been traditionally used to interact with analysis services. You see, these are Microsoft.analysisservices.admd client. So similarly, same exercise we are going to do with Power BI datasets. And uh, if you uh, have this, uh, you are creating the solution. This is the library that you have to go for. Current version is 1922.01, and uh, that is what we need to access. So once you, I, this is already added, but once you click it and install it, it will be here. So in my application, it is already there, so it's not sure it's showing the install thing here, but uh, otherwise it will be available to you. Um, so I have done put in my small code. Uh, I'm not a .NET expert, but uh, just know the basics. So I have put in my code in product controller for here. OK, let's begin here. So uh, uh, we'll see how uh, this for this is a Power BI report, all right, and it is connecting to a Tabular AWO. Uh, that is the my, one of the data set, OK, and uh, this is a product name. All right, this is the product list of products uh, that uh, is from the product table here. And uh, you see all these product names listed out here. So we'll try to pull up a few of these via our code too. Okay. So this is uh, one of the reports that is being created on Tabular AW. Now, when we go back to our code, uh, using a simple code here so that you could understand it. Uh, what I'm doing is this ADMD connection correctly trying to create a connection to our Power BI instance. Now, uh, this is the data source and this is the uh, connection string that you need to copy over. Let me go back and show you. You remember uh, where we copied our, uh, we copied our, you know, we copied our workspace string from here. To copy over the entire connection string, you can choose your data set that you want to connect to. All right, you could go to its settings server settings and this is your connection string so it will include your initial catalog to the it spin analysis and the so well, you can copy over this and key that in your data source connection string you need to provide your credentials here uh, because uh, i'm creating a direct connection here uh, if you create if we end up creating a custom api that will need some amount of uh, .NET expertise uh, which we which you could explore uh, with you know uh, with a dotnet counterpart further and uh, here we open the connection okay, and then we fill the we execute this simple query of summarize columns that is for product name i'm trying to get all product names in here and when i connect that to the data adapter all right i'll uh, i'll i'm getting all the uh, results set within this data adapter and after that uh, you could uh, you know you could uh, iterate through that pull up things and then uh, get the results set so idea is not to over this code intensively, but to showcase that uh, how you are able to uh, extend uh, this uh, Unix XML endpoint capability via these uh, nugget packages to execute DAX and get data from Power BI data sets. So imagine if you have a you know even if a measure in place you know, total sales or something, and your one of your client requests that you that needs to be shown not on Power BI side but also on one of their applications. That is uh, that is developed in .NET, whatever technology it is. So, what you could do here is you could build this API for them, right? You could execute your DAX in here, and this will return your uh, the desired result. So here we are taking up simply the product list. Uh, so if you want where to build this and give this to clients, what they will be able to do is uh, all they will know that uh, they need to hit this API and they'll get back the product list without knowing the nitty gritties involved there. That is which Power BI data set it is accessing behind the scenes, which uh, query is getting executed. They, all they will know is the API and the results. Start there. Okay. 
I'm accessing tabular AW here. So we'll see how this is able to pull up, right? We are we are trying to pull uh, all the product information, which we just saw on Power BI, uh, executing DAX in our custom API. So uh, this bearing ball, right? BB ball bearing, headset ball bearing, blade, crank man, uh, or uh, decal to freewheel. So these are all the products that uh, you'll be able to relate. Uh, this this is a, this will be part of this list. Okay, so this is uh, the entire product list. We are picking only 20 of those, so that is the reason we see only few here. Uh, but it's the entire product list that uh, you can. Uh, I'm I'm just passing the first 20 here, so that's the reason you see only 20. So uh, look here, right? See, bearing ball was there, right? Bearing ball is there. Correct. So similarly, other product names also. So we uh, we are able to pull out the same data that you see on Power BI report. Correct from uh, uh, using uh, the client libraries too. Uh, it would make better sense uh, <laughs> if you're able to you know uh, see this that the same information you can is is available not only to the Power BI report side but also to uh, also to any third party application. So if you are able to create this model in Power BI, deploy it to your Power BI space then create a custom API to access via XML endpoint. The same data, same uh, visuals, uh, I mean uh, in, uh, similar capabilities can be used to showcase on a different uh, platform too. So it, it can be any third party visualization tool, uh, your own custom visualization tool, uh, your Angular applications, uh, your .NET applications. Uh, there's no limit to it, absolutely no limit. Yes, that's uh, that's really uh, helpful. So uh, guys just wanted to add one more thing here. Like if you have a requirement where you do not want additional uh, storage to store your data and want to pull the data directly from your Power BI to your custom application at the time, you can use this concept and you will uh, bind the data in your custom application using this API. So that's really cool. Yes, Ruin, and I'd like to add that uh, uh, we have had uh, in past, uh, you know, uh, uh, when Tabular mod, uh, when we used to work with multi-dimensional cubes uh, uh, in, uh, you know, 2011-12, there were requirements where often we executed MDX, you know, using ADMD uh, directly on the cubes and not back that information and showcase that on the .NET applications. Uh, these used to be WPF client applications. So uh, similar capabilities, that is what I'm trying to showcase here, are available via Power BI datasets too. You could execute still using your code and uh, get back the result set and ca that can be displayed anywhere. So not just limited to Power BI, your measures, your calculations, the model that you have built, the effort that you do as a data modeler, right? Intensive effort goes in uh, creating that uh, awesome model, those star schemas uh, that you create in Power BI. And uh, once your data is in there in shape, why should it just be limited to Power BI? Let the world explore it. So your your model has no limits. With, uh, if you are using Excel endpoint, you are using client libraries to connect to that. Uh, it's absolutely has no limits. So whoever uh, analytics uh, make make it a free world there. Yes, absolutely. So that is why uh, I'm calling this custom API. This uh, this has been traditionally, you know, called as analytics API or something. Uh, different terminologies have been used. Uh, ADMD connections to Power BI or to analysis services. So this is the uh, you know this is the capability that you get. One idea is that your application can directly uh, get this code. All right, they can in your data layer, you could get these nugget libraries and uh, key in this code and interact with Power BI and put this up. But that would be for your you know, uh, own application. But for instance, you want to provide this as a API to all your enterprise, right? So, so that uh, if they want to get anything out of your analytic capabilities, they will be able to hit this API and get back the products or any measure uh, for the for that matter. So that is the you know strength of his power of it. 
uh, any any DAX query can be executed here and you'll be able to get back the results. So idea is to encapsulate this all together, build an enterprise solution around Power BI so that uh, other client application can utilize the analytical capabilities that Power BI has provided. All those calculations that you have done, all those measures that you have created, those result sets are available to other applications too. So uh, I did mention that uh, I'll show how you know how we are able to get this. So uh, just last week, right, Microsoft announced advanced scanner capabilities uh, in REST APIs. So REST APIs are a different thing altogether, correct? You could also interact with Power BI with REST API, Power BI data sets. Uh, we can probably cover them in another embedded session or something. I, I know, Dhruvin, you have also covered that in past in your one of in your, your videos too. So capability with REST APIs is different thing altogether, different ballgame. Uh, but here, what we are trying to address is all the capabilities that XMLA endpoint provides to us without going through REST APIs. So what we are using is not the, here, not are not the REST API. We are using here uh, uh, is the XMLA endpoint capability and uh, the client libraries that interact with the Power BI data sets. And we are willing to create our own APIs to extend our own functionalities, which REST API does not provide. So uh, here's an, uh, an example powerful enough uh, to showcase you that. So what I'll do is we'll get, uh, we'll uncomment these two couple of things. Okay. And uh, I'll just change it back to IT spin analysis sample. Fine. All right, so we see this measures right uh, in this space. So if you want to you utilize this client libraries also to extend metadata, right? And uh, uh, create your own documentation of the API, uh, documentation API as well, custom one, not depending on the REST APIs. So we'll see how it, you know, it, it is able to get back to you everything uh, from client libraries too. So this is additional capability that we'll uh, look over here. Uh, we'll go back to the IT spend analysis sample for once just to copy over the connection. And uh, yeah, while we are doing that, let's uh, just check out our profiler. OK. You see queries coming in, correct? Uh, so what uh, in the in this meanwhile, when I rendered IT spend analysis and all right, you'll see this. Uh, these all the DAX queries that have come in is in this year and uh, you'll be able to copy over these and look at them and study how much time that has been taken. OK, and uh, in case there are any errors, those will also be logged over here. Start time, all right. The DAX query, the user that executed it, uh, duration, everything, uh, all those details. I, uh, these capabilities provided with DAX Studio, but if you just want to prefer it to do with the skills sort of profiler, that it, here it is. So, uh, Let's go back to our PA and uh, we'll run it. So here it goes to the data set. I'll just bounce over it. OK. Um, uh, so see, we have the data set in here. OK. Now idea is to uh, iterate through that data set and find out. Uh, uh, so in this collection right now, we have uh, everything that uh, the metadata uh, is coming back from Power BI data set. All right, so if uh, this has all the information uh, about the measures, since we got, we wanted to get the met metadata for measures. So we have all, everything that is in here about measures. Um, so th uh, this exists in here, okay. Uh, this is a work in progress actually. So I wanted to show in quick watch in with itself. That is one reason. Uh, so um, you see, we'll have all this information in there catalog name, schema name, cube name, measure name. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, and uh, we'll have a measured GUID, its data type. OK, uh, description, the expression, actual measure, all right? Uh, so all these are the measure, metadata information of that. So we'll be able to access all this. So I'm just looking for rows results. OK, so that's a table collection. Here. All right, 
so the, uh, this is what I was trying to assess. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you see measures actual. OK, you see yes. that uh, uh, this is the actual measure that was it and it's data type two. So mm -hmm. if we go back to our, uh, you know. SMS. See this actual measure right here. Yes. That's what we wanted to showcase here. Uh, item array. Okay, within this, uh, we have everything, uh, the actual measure and uh, all the measures basically. Mm -hmm. LE1. So you, you see, we, we have got back all this information. So I was just to depict this is work in progress. I haven't yet made the custom, uh, you know, visual representation or uh, return factor because I still need to uh, uh, iterate through this. Right, and uh, build this so that you can see the result output uh, in a mm -hmm. formatted manner, I'll say. But uh, uh, I just showcase this that if you use these uh, uh, methods, right, get schema data sets and uh, similar capabilities. Also, uh, execution of TMSL for refresh, uh, everything uh, that you can do by SFMS, you could do right here too. So, uh, using your own custom API, try to build it out there. So, the forum is open, right? You could uh, if you are, do not have expertise in .NET like me, you could hire a, a, or you could collaborate with the .NET architect side, .NET development side, and build up your own custom APIs. Uh, collaborating and creating Power BI, you know, enterprise level solution, not just li being limited to the analytics side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, truly said up, you know, like uh, it's it's a just an approach that we can uh, take here, like which are the because uh, this API itself provides so many methods. So it's just an idea that, you know, with this particular uh, API calls, you can get all the measures that are available in your Power BI file. The same thing uh, that you can uh, you are doing with your Dex Studio, you, you will also get with this uh, XMLI endpoint as well. Correct, and the power it provides. Dax Studio has limited capabilities. That is for developers uh, debugging, right, and uh, improving your code. But this is for external world. This is your key to the external world. This is where what will enable Power BI capabilities to be, you know, showcased and uh, exposed to the external world. That is uh, other client applications. So any client libraries, uh, you can enhance this. You could uh, build up. Uh, I'm trying to showcase the capabilities. One is execute DAX. All right. You could execute any amount of DAX, any DAX that you have in there. Uh, pull up any measure value, right? And uh, 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 create your own custom API. Second, you could get uh, the metadata information. Third, you could uh, refresh data sets. And fourth, you could also enable backup and restore if you have it in storage. So you see the power that it provides and it brings to the platform. And then further enables to extend it via these client APIs. So all those capabilities that have existed uh, for years with analysis services, all those capabilities have been brought to Power BI. Uh, another interesting thing uh, I'd like to show here is uh, that this cube that you saw that we are working with apart from uh, Power BI, right? We were working with a, uh, another cube that was Tabular AW uh, within Power BI space. So that was uh, developed right here, okay, using SSTT in analysis services. Uh, Visual Studio, correct. Uh, the traditionally, which what we have used to develop Tableau, do Tableau modeling and create Tableau cubes, and then deploy them directly to Power BI space. So, you see the server connection, right? So this here I have provided the my workspace connection the string. Now Power BI is not in place right here. We have created the my cube and I have deployed it to Power BI without opening the Power BI desktop. So you understand that Power BI has a bigger picture, the bigger picture of Power BI here, uh, how it is an extension of the analysis services, not just limited to what you have seen, right? So if we go back just to our workspace, and I, if you look here, you'll find no report associated with Tableau AW because this is something that has been deployed, developed, and outside Power BI and deployed to Power BI workspace. So here I'm using my workspace to host analysis services. And that is the power that uh, PPU uh, workspaces bring in, premium capability power BI bring in. That is, if you have smaller cubes where you do not need to necessarily scale up much, you could uh, do away altogether with your, you know, uh, on-premise infrastructure. If you have um, cubes sitting there, if you have cubes in on VMs, right? You're assessing them via gateways. Uh, why not deploy them altogether to power BI space? Uh, 
uh, you could take up a few capacity, deploy them there and use them from there itself. So uh, I'm trying to stitch up two topics here. That is you know, using Power BI as analysis services, using uh, XML endpoint capability to interact with Power BI as analysis services, using uh, client APIs to extend that outside the Power BI world to other client applications. Uh, so if you look at it from a in broader way, uh, you'll be able to understand how Power BI is expanding much beyond visualization space that you see today. Absolutely, absolutely. This is uh, really, really uh, useful and it exp uh, it uh, opens up totally new uh, area to explore the Power BI with uh, extending with analysis services as well as, uh, you know, extending with the uh, custom APIs. Correct, correct, correct. And uh, uh, we could cover though that is a different topic altogether. Uh, building Power BI uh, paginated reports, connecting live with uh, you know, Power BI data sets. So that is also enabled today because of XML endpoint capability. Once that was introduced, only then uh, that came in, uh, you know, paginated reports. So uh, we can discuss them later. We have uh, now paginated visual in place, correct? So we can see how that can harness XML endpoint capabilities to and you know, we could virtually have uh, Power BI data sets uh, running both reports together, right? The Power BI page native visual uh, connecting to the same data set and the Power BI data set that built, used to build the Power BI report, PBX file. So both of them working together uh, on the same report. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And um, maybe uh, in our upcoming uh, new sessions, we will cover up those points as well. So will uh, the audience will get more context on that part as well. It, uh, if anyone, uh, yeah, I, it, if anyone has any doubts, they can reach out to you or me, right? We can, uh, I can provide more context around this um, and uh, now, if I show this slide, right, people should be able to understand this. Like, if a, even if from a thousand feet overview, uh, you should be able to understand that Power BI data sets, their capabilities, the calculation that you have done, then brought to them. These, those all can be utilized by client libraries, right, using XML endpoint capabilities and extend it to the other world. So it's your gateway to the world, <laughs> I would say. Yes, absolutely. All right. So, uh, Abhinav, uh, this, uh, I think uh, you covered almost everything, right? Uh, yeah. All right. Yes, okay. that also pretty much I wanted to cover for this session, uh, which was focused more around, you know, you know building custom okay. APIs around uh, to okay. give an idea, give an overview, uh, not a deep dive, because mm -hmm. uh, that would be really code intensive and uh, I, I that's also work in progress for me. <laughs> All right, no worries. All right, uh, so uh, thank you so much, Avino, uh, for explaining us with the amazing capability of XML endpoint, and it is something uh, which is totally endless capability to our uh, model. So uh, to summarize everything uh, of this today's session, first of all, we started uh, as a, by publishing our Power BI file uh, to Power BI service, and whenever we publish our file, actually it's behind the scene, it's a cube. We have explored that cube into SSMS and Abhinav also uh, explained us some other tools where we can, uh, you know, um, explore the same uh, Power BI service cube into your uh, another data management tools. And after that, uh, what we have explored is, uh, let's say for an example, if you wanted to grab some information from your Power BI data set, you can just use the APIs and just get that information from there. And also it has a capability that uh, some out of the box method using which you can get all the major information from your uh, Power BI uh, report and uh, grab all of these things uh, from there. So this is the overall information that we covered throughout this entire session. If you missed anything, uh, you can see timeline endpoint on my description box. So just check it out and click on the timeline point and you will reach to the specific endpoint that you wanted to see. Uh, another interesting thing I want to tell you uh, that uh, all of this information that we have uh, shown throughout this demo, any files or something, we will provide that uh, to our GitHub repository. I will share all these links uh, with you in the description box. Also, uh, 
if there is any uh, reference link i will share all of this link in the description box and if you have if you guys have any question feel free to add your question in the comment section so let me just uh, go with the ending ceremony uh, of the session so uh, if you are for the first time to my channel uh, make sure you hit subscribe and uh, press the bell notification to never miss any updates from my channel i am uploading regular content on uh, power bi power reps power automate power virtual agents teams and sharepoint on my channel so make sure that you don't uh, forget any content from my channel so don't forget to subscribe if you wanted to follow me on all my social media handles here is the link tree url just click on that it will redirecting you to this page here you can follow me on my youtube website in Instagram, LinkedIn, blog, Twitter, Facebook, and so many uh, other social media handles. Also, if you are wanted to part of my Twitter and Instagram, here are the link. And I would recommend everyone to follow me on Instagram because on Instagram, uh, I am uploading uh, different short content related power platform. Uh, so if you are interested for different posts, different reels, different IGTV, so don't forget to follow me on Instagram. So uh, your Insta learning would also be happen over there. If you are interested for only audio podcast, here is a podcast channel. Just click on that. You will be redirected to this particular page here i'm running the power platform show here you can listen different audio podcast in uh, for power platform and you can listen that podcast on your favorite podcast platform like google podcast apple podcast spotify and much more so with this this is dhruvin signing off uh, see you in the next session with some amazing content stay, stay tuned uh, have a great day goodbye thanks dhruvin